what's up y'all and welcome to this video thank you so much for tuning in i always appreciate you guys joining me for a little sit down and chat all right so about a month ago i uploaded a head-to-head -head battle between the mamiya 645 versus the pentax 645 had to do it had to do it and i'm glad i did i had the question in my head for a while which one's better? Is it the Pentax 645 or is it the Mamiya 645? What are the real differences? Which camera will give me the better quality images? Which one's lighter? Which one speaks to my spirit? These were the questions in my head regarding the two cameras. So I decided to stop thinking about it and just set the battle up. If you haven't caught the Mamiya 645 versus Pentax 645 video yet, I'm going to throw the link up there. Go ahead and check that out. And then I would probably come back to this one afterwards. I don't want you to watch this one first and let my opinion sully your natural response to what you're seeing which is why i waited so long to give my opinion on these two cameras because i didn't want to influence other people's opinions on these two cameras i personally don't like when someone gives me like a biased opinion on cameras you know if they're like a i only like fuji's person or like a, i only like canon person they're never really going to be as objective as you like and here's the good thing about me i don't own either of these two cameras so i'm not caping for either one i legit want to know which one was better which is why i made the video so definitely check out the battle first so it was very important for me to make sure that the playing field was even when it came to putting these cameras in a head-to-head -head battle with that in mind i made sure they had the exact same lenses i shot the exact same model i shot the exact same film stocks and i used the exact same settings for every shot i was meticulous about making sure everything was the same so that when we got the results it was just be the facts only the facts but that's over now the facts are in the other video this video you're getting my opinion just my opinion, all my opinions. So do with them what you will. They're only worth two cents. So I'm going to be talking to you about my experience handling both cameras and my experience post-processing the negatives of these two cameras. Round one, weight. If you've watched my videos when I talk about cameras, you know that weight is very important to me. How heavy something is can really determine whether or not I'm gonna rock with a camera. I don't like to be weighed down too much or I don't like the weight distribution to feel awkward to me. Like if it's heavy and it doesn't feel awkward, I might rock with you. But if it's heavy and it feels awkward, I'm probably gonna be complaining about it for a really long time. So much so that I probably shouldn't have the camera and I'm just annoying everybody at that point. When it comes to weight, the Mia 645 weighs 3.406 pounds. In grams, that's 1544. The Pentax 645 weighs 3.428 pounds. In grams, that's 1555. For me, that's not much of a difference. And honestly, handling the cameras that whole day, they felt the same to me, honestly. I was happy to have two straps to kind of put one on each shoulder to kind of balance out the weight. Tie. Ground two, grip. I did a video a while ago giving my initial impressions of the 645 the first time I shot it. Uh, when I shot it the first time, I walked around downtown LA for a little bit and I remember complaining about the grip. The grip handle was a bit small so to speak there wasn't like a lot of room to get my to get my fingers curled into it to get like a nice sturdy grip it was awkward i think i could only get these two fingers in and my hand was sore afterwards because i didn't have a strap i was just mostly carrying it so i didn't like that feel but the mamiya 645 has this nice fat hand grip you know i got small hands so i had a lot to hold on to and i appreciated that it was a comfortable hold and i preferred it if you haven't seen my pentax 645 initial review Here's that link. Check it out. Winner, Mamiya, 645. Round three, focusing range. For me, I felt like the Mamiya 645 had a bit more resistance on the focusing ring. It wasn't like I had to like put my whole shoulder into it to move it, but I definitely had to use force to get it to move around. Whereas the Pentax 645 focusing ring was like butter, just moving, just sliding for me. Could this have been a result of the particular Mamiya 645 camera that I was using on this day? Yes, it could be. That's what it is. But that's also what I have to go off of. Winner, Pentax 645. Round four, you find it. Now I did my best to capture what the inside of both camera look like. It's kind of hard to get the recording of it just right. I was shaking, the cameras are heavy. It was hard to kind of line it up perfectly to really showcase the difference in the viewfinder. But from my eyes, while using both cameras, I felt that the Pentax 645 had a brighter viewfinder. And I'm gonna stick to this because I was literally going from one to the other for every shot. So the Pentax 645 was brighter and the Mamiya 645 was dimmer. Winner. 
Pentax 645. Round five, images. Knowing that I shot the same film stock in both cameras and shot both cameras at the exact same settings, it was clear to me just based off of my preferences, but it appeared to me the Pentax 647 offered better dynamic range in my black and white photos. I found the Mamiya photos to be overall darker and that, and normally in post I would have tried to fix that. I would have tried to raise my shadows, decrease my darks, bring more light into it, but there's only so much I could have done because it's film. So. I did prefer the Pentax 645 black and white images. While on the reverse, when it came into the color, I have to say I really enjoyed the Mamiya photos. Um, I just felt like the Mamiya's images were a bit more punchy and I like the look of them, honestly. I love the way the Mamiya rendered the colors um, as opposed to the Pentax colors, which were a bit more subdued. Not like a lot subdued, but just they, they weren't as, they weren't as um, punchy, in your face, vibrant. So um, for color, I'm gonna give it to the Mamiya. Now we're gonna talk about bokeh. People care a lot about bokeh with portraiture. I'm not like a bokeh hoe. Ha, can you say that? <laughs> I'm not a bokeh fanatic. I think it looks nice when done well. I also think a lot of people miss focus by trying to shoot wide open. So I typically pick and choose my moment when shooting wide open. But with that said, I could have made more of an effort to shoot more wide open for more images. But when we started, it was pretty bright out. And when we went into the shadows, I should have, I should have opened it up more to allow for more bokeh tests to take place. But from the images that I have, I have to say that um, they're really comparable. I don't think one lens outperformed the other lens on the different systems. They both looked on par with each other, honestly. There wasn't one that, like the Pentax wasn't miles ahead of the Mamiya on this one and vice versa. They were very much on the same kind of um, level for me as far as how the lenses rendered their bokeh. So I would be satisfied with either as far as bokeh goes. So for bokeh, I'm gonna give it a tie. Tie. And those were the five categories that I kept in mind while I went into this head-to-head -head battle. These are the things I knew I wanted to look for and to uh, give results on. These are my five items with the subcategories in the last one as far as how uh, the images turned out. With that said, when we tally it all up, the winner by points. Winner, Pentax 645. I have to be honest, shooting this head-to-head -head between the Mamiya 645 and the Pentax 645 was tough. I thought at the end of it all, I would have a clear winner. Like I'll be like, oh man, uh, the Pentax just smashed the Mamiya 645 or the Mamiya 645 just body slammed the Pentax 645. But that really wasn't what happened. There was no Tyson knockout in this battle. It really came down to points. And like, if I added in a few other factors, like if I added in one more important factor, the fact that the Mamiya 645 comes with additional magazines. So that if you're someone like me who likes to shoot black and white and color, you can have a magazine loaded with black and white and a magazine loaded with color and just switch them out as you want it to, to save yourself some time. That would give the Mamiya one more point, thus ending in a draw. So with that in mind, you're not gonna lose anything quality-wise if you choose to get a Pentax 645 or you get a Mamiya 645. This comes down to preference, what you like. It may be as simple as, I like the look of the Mamiya 645 or I like the shutter sound of the Pentax 645. It's gonna be something small or it could just be like, I was gifted one of these cameras. And if you get gifted one of these cameras, all you have to do is say, thank you, friend. Thank you, fam. I appreciate you. You've just given me a quality camera. And that's honestly how I feel about both of these cameras. They're both quality cameras that are very equally matched. Heck, even on eBay right now, their prices are so comparable. They literally go for the same price range. They're frenemies. There you go. They're the frenemies of the medium format world because they both are, are really good cameras. So in the end, in my opinion, even though the Pentax 645 won via points based off of the parameters that I set ahead of going into this head to head, in my opinion, I would say this battle for me is a draw. Draw. Draw? Are you serious? Draw? Oh.
Come on, yo. Yeah, it's a draw. I hate to do it. I really do. I hate draws. I, I always hate draws, but man, this is, if ever there was one, then I think this is it. Sorry. This one just comes down to personal preference. All right, y'all, this head to head was a lot of fun for me. I enjoyed the entire process, planning it out, picking the model, picking the film, picking the location, figuring out how to make this thing as level as it could possibly be and bringing you guys the best video that I possibly could. And I'm very happy that you guys have enjoyed it so much. It's put me in a space where I'm thinking of like other cameras that could go up against each other. If you have an idea of a head to head battle between cameras, let me know. Keep them filmed though. If you have some film cameras in mind that you've been wondering which one better, list it down below. Let me know what matchups you think would be cool to see and I'll kind of go through and pick and choose some to kind of do for you guys. And uh, yeah, we'll keep these head to heads going for as long as I can because I have to say they're a lot of fun to shoot and I love the conversations that happen because of these head to heads. So yeah. If you made it this far in the video, please go ahead and hit that like button for me. It helps me out so much here on YouTube, allows me to be seen. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, because you know I'll be back for you guys next week with another one. All right, y'all, I'll see you then. Peace. But later on. Just let me be great. The noise, all oh, the noise.